So have you ever had that apple or that orange or even that banana and just felt like you weren't full yet? Well, that's most likely because your liver is craving more glucose, so you either need more, more of that fruit, more of that glucose, or there's way too much fat in your system that is then preventing the glucose from getting to your liver, which is really important. Yeah, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about glucose and the liver. Your liver runs on oxygen, water, glucose, and mineral salts. And a starving liver, a liver that is starving is not hungry for fats or calories, but it's actually hungry for glucose because your glucose is low in your liver and that's what it's craving. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's focus here on the things that prevent the glucose from getting to the liver. So pathogens that are in our bodies, they feed off of poisons like the Unforgiving Four. If you don't know what those are, check out Anthony's books. It goes into much detail on what those are. Um, things like plastics and petroleum and then those pathogens they are then sitting in the liver eating off of these things go to the bathroom do some number two and then it becomes this toxic <laughs> landfill in your liver and remember that glucose has a long way to travel so let's say you you peel that orange you eat it that glucose now has to go through your mouth down to your esophagus into your stomach, through the small intestines, down into the colon, and then once it's in the colon, it makes its way up the hepatic portal vein. And from the hepatic portal vein, it gets into your liver, and then it starts to refill your glucose reserves in the liver. But in the liver, if you've got these pathogens, these unforgiving four, kind of blocking its root, then it's gonna have a pretty hard time doing its job and filling those reserves up for you. So what happens if that glucose can't get past your liver? What What's going to suffer? Well, as we said earlier, your liver is going to suffer. Your liver is connected to your gallbladder, so that's eventually going to affect your gallbladder. Other organs in your body will also be affected. So there's your heart, there's your brain, there's your pancreas, and then there's our nervous system, which gets hungry and then passes on that signal to us and creates that hunger that we feel when we don't feel fulfilled. And then over time, all of this in combination with fats, high fat diets, fats, all of these poisons that we just talked about, you know, the unforgiving for the plastics, the petroleum, all of that gets stored in your fat cells and there's fat cells in the liver. And so now your liver's not only being clogged by the fat, so the glucose now has to get through this, these fat cells, but the pathogens now have a constant food source because they feed off the unforgiving four, which then gets stored in your fat cells, and now you're giving them a constant food source. <laughs> it's all it seems really complicated huh it does it's just but it's so simple right you just eliminate these foods and you start to feel better yeah and you don't have to eliminate fats completely right true yeah you can you just need to lower your fats yeah. and we've talked about this and bunch of under other videos that we've done right and when you should eat fats like saving it you know, for later in the day, things like that. So be sure to, to check out those videos. And then the adrenaline kicks in because your liver is so clogged up and it can't get enough glucose. Yeah, and like your liver basically goes into like freak out mode. Panicking. <laughs> and starts panicking because there's a clog and it can't get past the clog. And it's clogged because of those fats, those those toxins, the unforgiving for, all of these things are preventing the glucose from getting to the liver. So then the adrenaline starts, and when the adrenaline starts, the liver now has to fight off the adrenaline. Right? Yep, and this is why Ben was getting these crazy panic attacks, 
that his liver was just overloaded and it was creating all this adrenaline, creating panic attacks. And then, you know, once that adrenaline is formed, then it has to clean it up. And then it's just further depleting you from more glucose. glucose. So another glucose fake out is alcohol. And the reason it's a fake out is in your liver, you have these things called lobules. And the lobules crave the sugar and alcohol. Yeah, and even though the alcohol um, sugars can't fulfill the glucose reserves in your liver, it keeps craving it again and again. And alcohol addiction is really a liver that is starving, really, really starving for glucose and the right kind. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to start removing the unforgiving for, these things that clog the liver, these toxins, we need to get them out of our bodies. And we need to stop feeding the pathogens because when we feed the pathogens, it creates more toxins in the liver and now the liver has to deal with that. Yep. And we need to lower the fats, Yeah. right? Lowering our fats, that way the glucose can get to the liver and not be blocked by the fats that are in our bloodstream. And the most important thing, eat glucose, right? <laughs> eat a lot of glucose. Yes. So eat a lot of a lot of fruits because a lot of the fruits have the glucose. And fruits, honey, maple syrup, potatoes, squash. Yep. All the stuff that will refill that that uh, glucose reserve in your in your liver. So bring in more of the good stuff, eliminate the bad stuff, and you'll see a huge difference. And make sure to check out our next video. Yes, we are going to talk about all of the foods that bog down the liver, bog down even your body, and how long they stay in your bloodstream. And be sure to subscribe if you guys haven't already. Hit that little bell to get notified every time we post a new video. And drop us some comments below. We like hearing from you guys. Yes. All right. Definitely. We'll see you guys next time. All right. See ya. Bye.